you have watched and seen many of your peers, this doesn't happen to you a lot, just get wrecked by criticism. You mean the, the, the broadcasters getting yes, wrecked? Yes, yeah. I'm talking about there. there is such a swell of all manner of emotion around sports right now. And such a cruelty in the way that we absorb content with the advent, I shouldn't even say the advent of social media, but there's a lot of criticism on social media that would not be said to anybody's face. And you manage a space in this ecosystem that somehow doesn't get a lot of what I'm talking about, which is that announcer stinks for all of these reasons. Right. No, it's incredible. Well... Twitter is just, it's, it's toxic in terms of it gives people the license just to destroy people. And I, I guess it's the old thing, uh, uh, you know, people want to make themselves better by bringing down others, <coughs> excuse me, to their, to their level. Um, Five dollars. Don't pay any attention to me. It's just a fine for coughing into a microphone. It's an inside joke around oh, here. Okay. You're going to put the $5. You're going to actually get the cash out of your pocket here and give us $5. <laughs> you're, you've got Van Gundy and Mark Jackson. They're perpetually getting hammered. Those guys are perpetually getting beat up. They're more opinionated than you are. You're playing it down the middle. But they're, they're part of the telecast is always something that's polarizing because there's a lot of people listening, and they're going to get mad about something. Well, they're, they're, their criticism, though, uh, fr from what I view it at, is they have such a love for the game. So when they see a player, a coach, or a ref, or the league not doing something that's for the best for the game, that's where they criticize it because they want the best of the game that they love the most. And that's, to me, what makes them so good is they're not hesitant to, to make their feelings felt. But I also feel their love of the game comes out all the time. And I mean, the criticism that they get, I, I have no idea. I, I think they're, you know, for me, it's a dream come true working with these two. We've been friends, all three of us, for over 30 years. And to do it this long with them sitting by my side, um, that's one of the reasons why I've had success because I'm with two guys that, that I, I love as brothers, teach me about the game, and I'm so comfortable with them on the air. Do you tell them how you feel about them? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so funny you say that. Uh, because they uh, they don't they don't like that kind of stuff. They're not interested. They 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 know how I feel. They don't need me to say it. But just the other day, before a game one of the finals, I sent them both a text telling them how much they mean to me. But I specifically said at the end of the text, I don't want to hear anything back. Don't respond to this because it would be a mock. They would be mocking me for for doing that. But they know how I feel about them. Why'd you feel the new, the need to do that right before that? Because I, I I hadn't said it in a while, um, and that's kind of you know again it goes back to what we were talking about before when you have kindness thrown your way, and it makes you feel good. You like to to show you know what I can do the same thing. Maybe maybe I can make somebody feel good with a with a nice text or a nice phone call. And I just felt because I hadn't told them in a while. And we've been doing it a long time. And it kind of came because, you know, there was a press release about my 18th finals. And I can't comprehend that. I, like, that's not something I can process, that I've been able to call the finals for 18 years. That's beyond anything I could even possibly dream about. And to do it with them, uh, it just was a it, – it made me feel, boy, how blessed I am to have these two next to me. And that's why I sent it. How do you feel about them? I mean, you've told me they're like brothers, but what does that mean? Um, they would do anything in the world for me, and they know I'd do anything in the world for them. And that's on a personal note. On a professional note, uh, the beauty of it is we can say anything to each other on the air, and nobody gets offended. And that's rare in the business to have that. And I think... Um, Again, because we came in the league the same time, Jeff taught me so much about the league as a coach when he was an assistant. Mark taught me so much about it as a player and then as a coach. We watched our families grow up together. We just, and we spent a lot of time away from our families with each other. Um, that it just, it's just been a special part of my life to, to have all this, these wonderful things happen with them next to me. And I can't imagine it being any other way. But you don't tell them that you love them. Oh, no. Jeff would smack me if I, I told him. But they know I do. But it's not said between you. 
It's just funny because it's so obvious. You couldn't work together for 30 years without the level of understanding, appreciation, respect, admiration that you have for them. These are difficult jobs. Man, these things splinter. They don't last 30. They, the friendships, some last 30 years, many last 30 years, but these work relationships can be fraught with all sorts of garbage. Right. It's, but not everybody's comfortable verbalizing that stuff. And I've, I know that. And if I think somebody's uncomfortable with that, maybe I won't say it as much. I'm like, my dad was, again, going back to my father. My father, for, for a Marine construction worker, was a very affectionate man and was not afraid to talk about that. And I, I got that from him. So I'm very comfortable that, with expressing my emotions and telling people. But other people aren't. So 